Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. We are live today at Berkshire Elementary School featuring a special episode with Science for Kern, and we're here to do Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do the Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Susie. If you have questions on your math homework, you can call in Bakersfield 636-4357. From San Luis Obispo, you can call toll free 1-866-636-6284. You can also email your questions to do the math at kern.org or you can watch online at dothemathonline.net. All can, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you can also look for us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All right. So a variety of ways for you to get in contact with the program. A lot of things going on today. Our first episode with Science for Kern, and we'll be visiting uh, those folks. They're out at Berkshire, so they're mm -hmm. going to work with some of the students out there. We have a cool. very special guest in studio. We're going to make her do some impossibly difficult math today, mm -hmm. and I'm sure she's very excited about doing that. We do have phone callers, uh, or tutors ready to help you out with phones until 5.30 this afternoon. And if you do your problem on air, if you say, hey, I'd like to see it worked out if possible, and we can see it on the internet or the TV, let them know that, and you will automatically receive a ticket to the Kern County Fair. So we appreciate the great folks out at the Kern County Fair for providing those for everybody out there. And before we get to any of that, let's first take a look at today's Math in the News. All right. I found something really cool and I figured I had to do something with this. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start by looking at a map. Have you ever heard of Yap? Y A P. Yap. The island of Yap. I haven't. Uh, nor did I before today, all right? And we have a map of it right here we can take a look at. And uh, here's the Yap International Airport. And just by looking at this, you would have no idea kind of where it is because we have no latitude or longitude and lines to kind of reference for. Uh, so what we'll do is we will zoom out so we can kind of see where we're at. And we still have, you know, still kind of looking for where this is. And smaller and smaller. That thing is getting smaller and smaller, and indeed it is. And so now we can see the Caroline Islands over here, mm -hmm. and we've got another island, and we uh, mm. now we see the Philippines over on the side. Okay, so that island is <laughs> down in here somewhere. Okay, part of Micronesia, and we can see how small this is and how remote it is. And the reason I bring that up is because of this. Any idea what that is? Hmm. I really don't have an idea. I mean, it looks like a rock, basically, right? Could, kind could of. be a, an attempt at a wheel. I'll tell you what that is. That's cold, hard cash. Okay. <laughs> I kid you not. That's cold, hard cash right mm -hmm. there. Okay? Now, when I saw that, it was like, all right, now I need to figure out what's going on. Okay? It is about five feet in diameter and it is money, it is a currency. It's called a ray star. Now I'm not, saying, not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. It's R-A-I, so I imagine it's ray or rye mm -hmm. stone. And it is the currency of choice for the people that live on that mm -hmm. island of Yap. Yeah. 11,000 people, all right? Now, it says- It'd be hard says, to carry around. 
So they're the only ones there, okay? Now we know this because the stones, now this is valuable because it's made of limestone and there's no limestone naturally formed on Yap, okay? So what they had is the stones were developed into a form of currency. What they would do is they would go to other places, get this limestone and bring it back, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what they used. Now, what it's worth is based on several factors. The first has to do with its provenance. How many lives were lost in transporting the stone to Yap? All right, wow. because you would be in a boat hundreds of miles mm -hmm. to get this thing back to Yap. Okay. The second factor has to do with who discovered the particular stone. Having a famous person's name attached to it or the dedication of a chief who sponsored the trip can greatly increase the value of this. There's also the matter of craftsmanship. Many of the newer stones are highly polished with smooth edges, a look that's been achieved with modern metal tools. The older stones, more rough, finished with not modern tools, mm -hmm. okay, ones that they had made themselves, gives that a higher value. Okay. So the older it is and the craftsmanship behind it, instead of using more modern tools, would make it worth more. So. Seeing as how this is a large stone and it's currency, they usually don't go, all right, I'm going to wheel this over to you for payment of whatever. Mm -hmm. They would just say, it's yours and this is what I'm receiving for it. Mm -hmm. And then later on, if you need to use that, you just say, all right, now it's yours. That makes okay? sense. And they have smaller ones that they can carry around, but I just found that interesting. So I figured, all right, let's go ahead and do some money with this. Okay. All right. So there's students in primary grades and remember do the math is open to any students. I mean we say that most of the students have phone in are between fourth and twelfth grade. There are students in second and third grade that are watching this also. They've been on the program mm -hmm. and some of them are learning to do problems with money for the first time. So we know that we've got hundreds, tens, and ones as far as money and then the decimal point is the and. Three tenths. So one dime is one tenth Mm -hmm. of the dollar and then we've got the hundreds. So we've got that. And just a little factoid right here. If you wanted to make change for a dollar and somebody <laughs> says, how many ways can I make change for a dollar? There are 293 ways to make change for a dollar. That's a lot. And if you stay organized, and I only put a few right here, okay, obviously a dollar coin. Somebody mm -hmm. gives you a dollar bill, you can go, here's a dollar coin I made, okay. Mm -hmm. Two half dollars, one half dollar, two quarters. One half dollar, one quarter, two dimes, one nickel. Mm -hmm. And we can go on, on and on and on like that. That's how you get the 293 different ways. And that is how you can figure out by staying organized and keeping a list the different ways to make change for a dollar. And that is today's Math in the News. In studio with us right now, we have a young lady from Stockdale. Why don't you let everybody know your name and what grade you're in? My name is Allie Hall and I'm in fifth grade. How's fifth grade going? Good. <laughs> You like fifth grade? Yes. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> What's the most difficult thing about fifth grade so far? Because you've only been in there for what, a little over a month or so? Yeah. What's the most difficult thing about fifth grade? The essays, I guess. <laughs> the essays. Oh, good. Do you like writing essays or is it? I don't like writing You don't like writing essays. essays. Well, that's all right. Because you know what? We're not going to make you write any essays today. We're just going to make you do some math problems. Is that all right? Yes. Okay, you know what? We're going to go out to Berkshire in a couple of minutes, but before we do that, I'd like you to do one quick problem to get you warmed up. You ready? Yes. All right, head on over to the board. This is one of the uh, pages out of your book, so we'll just go ahead and take this, all right? So what I'd like you to do is write down this number, and I'll say it once, and then I'll say it again slower for you so you can figure out how you want to write this down, all right? So it's going to be 281 million. 480,100. So 281 million, so 281 and then put your, there you go, 480,000. <laughs> Just keep writing, it'll be fine. 480,000, there you go. 100. Now what you needed to do is it was saying place value of whole numbers. All right. So what I would like you to do is skip the hundred part at the end. All right. Underline any other number that you would like. Just underline any one of them. All right. What is the value of that eight? So tell us what it is and how do you know that? It is 80,000. How do you know that? 
Well, this is the thousand, and this would be the ten thousands. Okay. And since there's an eight there, it would be eighty. Good. So it's eight ten thousands, which would be eighty thousand. All right. Why don't you go ahead and underline the other eight for the heck of it, since we have two of them in there. What's that worth? Eighty million. How do you know that? Because this is the millions, and then there's an eight there, so it's eight. Eight million, no, ten millions. <laughs> All right. All right. You now, it. you said that you have been exposed to decimals and numbers after the decimals, correct, in fifth grade so far? So put a decimal at the end of your number, at the end of that hundred. Right Whoop, at the end of the hundred. Yes. Ooh, there you go. Make the whole thing move. That was pretty slick. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it back there for you. There we go. All right, so at the end of the hundred. After the two zeros. There you go. And then put two other numbers at the end of that, whatever numbers you'd like. All right. Now, this is a test for you, okay, because I don't know if you've been taught this or not. Can you say that number all the way through mathematically correct? Um, 281 million... 480,100.64. Okay. Pretty good. But instead of saying 0.64, <laughs> do you know another way to say that? When you see the decimal point, instead of saying point, you can say and, Six. and then what? Do you know? 64. 64 what? Hundreds. There you go. You got it. I didn't even have to <laughs> help you with anything. All right. So nicely done. Allie, come on over here. Do remember we have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon. The phone numbers are at the bottom of your screen periodically throughout the program. As a reminder, if you phone in and you're from Kern County and we do your math problem, you're automatically going to the Kern County Fair. If you call in from San Luis Obispo County and you'd like to go to the fair, you can come on over for the weekend if you are. Simply let us know. We'll give you a ticket as well. But if you're staying in San Luis Obispo County and you would like some ice cream, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is let us know that, and we will give you Doc Bernstein's Ice Cream Lab ice cream for free. Right now, we're going to head out, and we're going to check out Science for Kern at Berkshire Elementary. We are live today at Berkshire Elementary School, our first special episode featuring Science for Kern with Michelle Roy. How are you doing today? I'm great. It's really good to be here. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about what Science for Kern is all about? Yes, absolutely. Um, Science for Kern is um, the only mobile lending library um, here in Kern County. Um, we focus on fourth and fifth grade um, classrooms all over Kern County. And basically my job is to travel to all um, parts of the county and um, teach science lessons in classrooms as well as uh, deliver science units and um, work with the students there in the classrooms if the teacher requests. Now how many districts do you have that you go to? Well there are 47 districts in Kern County and um, I'm servicing over 20 of them currently. And how long have you been doing this? I've been with Science for Kern over a year now. Wow. This is my second school year. Now this is our first episode. Yes. And we have a challenge today. Yes we do. And I'm gonna let you explain all about it. Okay well this is our first um, Science for Kern engineering challenge and um, today the students uh, are gonna be faced with a challenge. I got a letter from Captain Kidd and uh, it seems that Barnacle Bob his his first mate sunk the ship with too much gold. Oh, no. So Captain Kidd needs our help. He needs us to design a new ship for him that will hold his required amount of gold. So for us today we're going to be using foil as the uh, hull, the uh, actual boat part today and our gold today is going to be pennies and the students are going to be challenged with um, building a foil boat with a mast and sail that will uh, hold all 50 pennies wow, today. All 50. Okay well I'm gonna let you go for it. All right so students go ahead and open up your bags now and inside your bag you can go ahead and remove the foil, remove your foil, and you have a piece of tape. You require your um, ration of tape there um, at your, um, next to your group. And you have your straw. What are we going to be using our straw for today? It's going to serve as our what? Sail. As our, not our sail, but our? 
as our mast. Show me what we're going to use for our sail today. There we go, an index card. Now, each, each group has an allotted amount of foil. You do not have to use all of the foil. But can you use more of more foil than what I gave you? No. No, this is it. Now, if you want, you have scissors that you can use to cut your foil if you choose. You can fold your foil. Now, think about this for a second. Just design-wise. Could you have a boat that was shaped like this? No. Could you? Maybe. Sure, I didn't say you couldn't. But do you think that if we just stuck this piece of foil with a mast and a sail in your tub of water, do you think this would stay afloat with 50 pennies on it? No. no. That probably wouldn't be the best design for your boat, would it? Yes. No. no. So what I want you to do is talk with your partner and get going on building a boat shape of some sort that you think will float and hold your 50 pennies. And I'm going to be circulating around helping you as we go. And as you guys are working, we're going to be heading back to the studio. So when we come back live, they're going to see your progress on what you guys have been doing with your boats and how you've been building them, okay? All right, you guys ready to get working? Yeah. Okay, we're back to you live at the studio. All right, thanks for that, Mary Lou. And we would like to see the uh, boat that you possibly put together and see how many pennies that can hold. We'll uh, have Mary Lou do that in competition with the kids over there. Hey, do remember we have phone tutors available until 5.30. Do you remember if somebody calls in what they get for calling in today? A uh, ticket to the fair. A ticket to the fair. <laughs> All right. So right now we're going to go to the phones. And Kyle, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing great today. Good. And you're a student at Williams Elementary, correct? Yes, I am. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. I am working on a ratio problem, and this includes double number lines. Okay. And the problem is Frank has been driving at a consistent speed for three hours, during which time he traveled 195 miles. Frank would like to know how long it takes him to complete the remaining 455 miles, amusing him maintain the same constant speed. Help Frank determine how long the remain, remainder of the trip will take. Include a table or diagram to support your answer. Okay. Well, I prefer the table, but since it asks for a double number line, I guess we'll start there. Um, let's just start somewhere you said 195 miles uh, goes with three hours. Yeah, that's 195 miles. Okay. Do you know, now Kyle isn't watching, so we're going to be talking to Kyle at the same way as if it is when you call in. So um, Kyle, can you tell how many miles are in one hour? And one, I'm um, have to divide, have to divide 195 and three. So I'm doing the math right now. So 195 divided by 3, you're getting that answer, right? Yeah, I'm getting that answer right now. Okay. Yeah. I got 65. 65? Yes. Great. Okay, so 65 lines up with 1. Whether you're making a double number line or a table, mm -hmm. um, 65 lines up with 1. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. 
Okay, so how do you think you would get to four? Is it 455 miles? Right. 455 miles. So it remain. So he has to go from where he's at at 195 and do another 455. Another 455. I think so. Is do you need to do another 455 or just get to 455? Yeah, it says that complete the com the complete the remainder of 455 miles. Okay, so we're just getting to. So the remainder of okay, so just get. I want to know how long it will take him to complete it. Okay. So if three hours is 195, then what's four hours? You can do 195 plus 65. Could you say that again, please? Okay. Yes, um, 195 went with three hours. Three. If you add another 65 miles, what will go with four hours? Oh, okay. I think I heard you say it, right? Hmm? 195 plus 65, I think you said 260. Is that right? Wait, you're, I'm adding six, you said? You know what? Let's not go one at a time. You know that it's 65 miles for one hour, so how long would it be for seven hours? If you did 65 times seven. Oh, we found it, didn't we? So, seven hours lines up with 455. Yes. Now, I kind of goofed because I already knew the answer, but I should have started at 455 and divided by 65, and then I would have gotten seven hours. Does that yes. kind of make sense? Yes, that does. Okay. Thank you, Kyle, for calling. Uh, Nicely done, and congratulations. Got yourself a free ticket to the Kern County Fair, so we hope you enjoy that out there. And you have been to the fair before, correct? Yes. All right. If you had the opportunity to go to the fair again, what is the first thing you would kind of go to? Would it be the food, the rides, a show, the animals? What do you think you would go to first? Some of the rides. Some of the rides first? Now, it's better to do that first instead of eating, because if you ate first and then went on the rides, that could be adventurous as well. So. But you know what? Since you're here, we don't have to worry about that. We're going to put you back to work. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Back to work, young lady. Oh, here we go. A different form of what you're working on. All right. So it says, what is the standard form? So you're going to put a number in standard form. All right. Do you know what standard form is? You write it out as the number. Do 23. How would you write that in standard form? Good. All right. So you got 23. Good. All right. So let's get rid of that. Now I'll give you the one that's actually on your paper. Here we go. 210 million, 64,000, 50. Okay. There you go. Now, mm -hmm. what made you stop? Because you wrote the 64 <laughs> and then you stopped and erased it. What were you thinking of at that time? I put it as 640. Right. If you kept going, it was going to be 640. But what, I want to know if there's a way for you to explain it. What happened? Like, when did you realize you had to stop and fix it? When I looked up at it. When what? When I looked up when at it. When you looked up, there you go. All right, so that one works. Erase that number. Let's try this one now. I think she knows there has to be three digits between the commas. Right, she's yeah. got the periods correct, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. every three you've got, that's a period. Mm -hmm. All right. And Susie, after this problem, you can show Allie how to erase that easier. Okay. Show her the little <laughs> trick with that, all right? Okay. Here we go. All right. 
So I'm going to come up with a number. It's not even on your homework assignment paper, all right? Okay. 203 million, 7,000, ooh, you caught yourself a little quicker mm -hmm. that time, <laughs> 9, and 14 hundredths. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. Underline the three, if you would be so kind. And what is the value of that three? Three million. Perfect. You have passed. We will give you some more difficult problems in a moment. So come on over here quickly. Do remember, we have phone tutors available until 530. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to go back to the phones. And Abraham, how are you this afternoon? Hello, Abraham. Hi. Yes, how are you, Abraham? Good. Good. Are you watching us on the TV? Yes. Do me a favor and turn the volume on the TV all the way down. That way you can just listen to me over the phone and we'll be able to communicate a little bit easier. Does that sound good? Okay. All right. Abraham, where do you go to school? Excuse me? Where do you go to school? There you go. I see. I think now they've got the volume on the TV set turned down. So, Abraham, are you ready? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and just work on the problem that you've got. Can you read the problem out loud? Um, 793. Okay. Plus 125. Okay, and is that the whole problem? Is that yes. the whole problem, Abraham? Okay, let's see how much you can do by yourself. Do you know which end to start at? Which column? Excuse me? Should I start at 7 plus 1 or should I start at 3 plus 5? 3 plus 5. And what is 3 plus 5? 8. 8, correct. And 9 plus 2 is? 11. And what do I do with that 11? I bet you already know. You carry the 1. Very good. Okay, and then 1 plus 7 plus 1 is? 8. Almost. Try again. 9. That's correct. 918. Do you agree with that answer? Yes. Okay. Now, Abraham, it says here that you're in third grade, correct? Yes. Okay, so that was one of your problems. And it also has on here to simplify a problem. Were you doing that as well? Mm. Or was that somebody else's problem maybe at the house? That's the problem. And so that's the only one that you were working on? Yes. All right, well, you know what? Easy enough. Thanks for calling in. You also have yourself a ticket to the Kern County Fair, so we hope you have an enjoyable visit to the Kern County Fair whenever you happen to go. Now, you have had no problem with the math problems you've been working on so far, so we're going to take a break. I want you to get some rest because I've got some real good problems for you coming up, all right? We'll be back with more right after this. Today we're at Elk Hill School, and today we're here to... Once again, we're at Elk Hill School, and with me today I've got student Ryan. How are you today? Good. You ready? What's that? It's, um, two and 32 hundredths. Excellent. I always thought you were going to just say, those are some numbers, 2.32. Well, you even went the step beyond and said 2 and 32 hundredths. Perfect. What I'd like to do is turn this into a mixed number. You know what mixed numbers look like? Um, Here's an example of a mixed number, 1 and 2 thirds. 
where we have a whole number and then a fractional part next to it. So it's a mixed number, okay? So if I was going to uh, do this, it would start with one, the whole number, and, and then the decimal after, like we have here. But we don't want this, we want it in this form, okay? Mm -hmm. So looking at that, what would be the number, the whole number here? Um. So in one and two thirds, the whole number came from the decimal and for the number in front of the decimal one. So here, what would be the whole number? What's in front of the decimal? Two. Two, right? So we're going to have two. And then we have to make a fraction out of this, okay? So you said two and 32 hundredths. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 32 hundredths, how would you write that as a fraction? Um, don't know. Write down exactly what you said. Write down 32. Hundredths, so put a fraction line. Yep, just go across like that. And hundredths, how do you write 100? So just write 100 under it. There you go, so now say this. 32, 32 over 1, 100. Right, 32 over 100, 32 hundredths, okay? So what we want to do is the answer could be simply, all right, so go ahead and put 2 over, and 32 over 100 here. So say this again. 2 and 32 hundredths. Say this. Two, two and, and thirty-two hundred. So these are equivalent. These are the same. Okay, but what we'd like to do is simplify it. So I want to make this number equivalent, but with smaller numbers in it. Okay. Okay. So do you have an idea how to do that? <sighs> if I did this, if I said I have four over ten, that would be the same as two over five, because two would go into both of them, right? So I divide this by 2, and I divide that by 2, and I get 2 over 5. See how these are smaller than that? Is there anything we could do to make that smaller? Um, Can you think of a number that would go into both of those? 16 and 50? Or so you're going to divide each of them by 2? Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. For, for the students watching at home, what we're doing, we're going to divide each of those by 2. And what would that then become? 16 over 50. Good. That is definitely smaller. Now, is there any way we could go even smaller than that with numbers? Um, yeah. What do you want to do next? Um, almost forgot. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, that's okay. You were thinking, how did you know that two went into both of these? Because they're both um, even numbers. Okay. What do you think you can do here? Are um, they both even numbers? Yeah. So what will go into them again? Two. All right. So why don't you put divide by two on each of those? And what do we get now? Perfect. So we started with 32 over 100, went to 16 over 50. Now we have 8 25ths. Can you make that any smaller? Mm. So you started shaking your head no. How do you know that we're at the end of this? Because this is um, like, an, uh, this is an even number and this is a non number, so they can't have, like, it can't be divided by, like, they can't both be divided by two. Okay. One of them can, but the other one can't. Yeah. Evenly, right? So one way we could definitely look and look, all right, is take eight. What goes into eight? One? Uh, two and four. Four and eight, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what goes into 25? One? T um, three. Wait. Wait, no. Um, no. 
five. Right. And it's five times what? Five times five? Five, yeah. So you know that that's the last one. So it's just simply one, five, and 25. So you did the correct thing. You know that 8 25ths is the final. So let's go ahead and write our whole number down here again. And then put the fraction next to it. Well, we'll go ahead and put the final one that we've got. Oh. The smallest one. There we go. All right, so what did we start off with? Um, 2 and 3 to 200. And we turn it into the mixed number, which is? 2 and 2 and 8 25th. Ryan, perfectly done. And once again, a big thanks to all of the staff and students at Elk Hill School. We certainly did enjoy our visit out there with Do The Math. Hey, if you'd like Do The Math to come to your school, simply give us a call. Let us know where you're at, and we'll get a hold of your principal and see if we can work something out. We do have phone tutors available until 530. We're going to make Allie do some more difficult work. But right now, we're going to go back out, check our friends from Science for Kern. We are back live at Berkshire Elementary School and we have our first episode with Science for Kern with Michelle Roy and the students are working on their first challenge which is to create a boat for, it was uh, Captain Kidd and Barnacle Bob and they have to create a boat that holds 50 pennies and they have been having so much fun. So come on with me and let's check it out with some kids. We're going to go over here to Melanie. Melanie, we were talking earlier. When did you guys have created your boat? What were you doing with those pennies? I was, um, um, I was drawing them because if you put any water on the, on the penny, it will put more weight on it. And then it will make it, but if you dry it off, it will make it lighter. Okay. So. How many times have you guys built your boat? Like five, six. Six times. Yeah, do you guys think you have it now? Yeah, we're trying. We're trying. Yeah. yeah. And then we taste it, so the water will come in, and then it'll put more weight on it. So, it'll we'll make it more heavier. Very good. Now, this group over here, you guys have had a couple trials, right? What did you have? What have you found the most difficult about the challenge? The tin foil because because we, we only have a little bit stuff like just like this and the penny. So how many? Like we only have like we could and take. So that means we only have a little bit of stuff to do it. Did you guys have a lot of with your your boats just? Sinking. No. Well, it didn't sink. It just um, the little cracks. Well, it just just two minutes and then. Oh, okay. well, it doesn't sink. It just water gets through cracks. Okay, we'll keep working. Okay, and we'll come on back to you. Let's go over here. Now, this group, these gentlemen. What are your guys' names again? Justin and Mandy. Justin and Mandy. Okay. So I've been watching them. Can you guys? You designed this boat, right? Yeah. Can you kind of tell us what happened with your boat here? Okay. What happened was mostly we put, it only can fit like 10. And whenever we put it in, I think it was mostly more on each one of the sides. And then it will like fall over. You want to show so, us real quick what happened? Yeah. So this is what happens if you put So, obviously it tipped over, yes? yes? So what's your strategy for your next boat? To make it like larger for them. Probably make, make it, it larger so more. fit this on top of it. Very good. And he added a ball. We were going to add another one right here. Well, there is one back here. If we had only two more balls that we can add, we can put one right here and right here. 
probably to hold it like that okay. on top. Okay. Well, good luck, gentlemen. All right. Good luck. Our Thank last you. group over here. Ladies. Hello. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Tell us what you did with your design. So what we did was uh, we hired this up so even though it's drowning a little bit, it, it won't still reach the thing. Deep. Deep. It won't okay. fill up it fill it up and make it dry one and also we spaced up the so it'll points. Be leveled and even. So it'll be balanced. Yeah. Oh very so good. I love those words. Those, the vocabulary words are amazing. Alright, well good luck. Keep working. And when we come back, we're gonna see some of these boats tested. Back to you at the studio. All right, nicely done. Like to see how that turns out with all of those variety of boats out there and how many pieces of little gold pennies they can put on there. All right, like I said, we're through with the place value with you, all right? Let's take a look at the, uh, the camera right here. We'll take a look at the problem that you're going to be working on right now. So it says, Giuseppe. Giuseppe bought three notebooks at $1.20 each, a box of pencils at $1.50, and a box of pens at $1.70. How much did Giuseppe spend? All right, so head on over, let's get that problem to work on. So we have three notebooks at $1.20 each. We have a box of pencils at $1.50. And we have a box of pens at $1.70. We need to know how much Giuseppe spent all together. Okay. Whoa, where'd you get that zero from? Three times zero. Okay, so as you're doing it, explain it to me so that I can understand where you're going with everything, okay? Zero times three is zero, because anything times zero is zero. Okay. And then three times two is six, and then three times one is three, and then how, did he only get one box of pens and pencils? Well, that's all it says in the problem, so let's go ahead and leave it like that for now. Okay. And then... Oh, oh. So what was the total value? Six dollars and eighty cents. Then you need to write that somewhere, right? <laughs> now what was the total value? Six dollars and eighty cents. You need to write that somewhere, don't you? That's <laughs> six point eight zero. <laughs> He's being tough on you. Ah, now we have it correct. <laughs> See how it's different? Now it's six dollars and eighty cents, right? Because <laughs> otherwise it could have been six pieces of wood and eight tenths of a piece of wood, right? <laughs> so that's why we make sure that we put that dollar sign and that decimal in there so that way we know that it's money, all right? Nicely done. So you had said they only had one box of pencils and one box of pens. That's what we had, right? But you yeah. wanted to know if that's the way we were going to leave it. Do you think you would need more pens or more boxes? Or pens, I mean. Pencils or pens? Which one do you think you'd need more in school? Pencils. Pencils? And the pencils were, let's see, $1.50 a box. How many boxes do you think you would need? Two. Make it two boxes of pencils instead. So how could you do it a little easier instead of starting all over? Because we need to Continue? add one more box of pencils. What would you like to do? Hmm. Change it. OK, you can go Fix ahead and do that. I'll, I'll let you do it whatever way you like. Good start. <laughs> hmm. 
So if you want to, Susie can erase some stuff for you kind of yeah. quickly if you want. So yeah. let her know what you want erased. Um, that. Okay. You still want to start with the 360? Um, yes. Okay, I'll leave that one there then. Yeah. I want to give you a hint. <laughs> we forgot one thing over there. Uh, yes. That's... Oops. Ooh, there you go. That's pretty cool. It made it all disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to put the numbers up? That you Let's see if we can get rid of this. I think we can just go back like that. Okay. There we go. I would like that little trick. <laughs> okay. Now you got it. There you go, dollar got that sign. dollar sign yeah. on there immediately. All right, nicely <laughs> done over there, Allie, $8.30. Nicely done, we'll see if we have more time to make you do an even more difficult problem later on. <laughs> but first, we're gonna go back to the phones, and Giselle, how are you this afternoon? Good. And you're a student at Cato, correct? Yeah. What grade are you in? Six. All right, as soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Walmart sells a case of 24 cans of Diet Coke for six eighty-eight. Kroger sells a 12-pack of Diet Coke for three ninety-nine. Which is the best buy? All right, so while Susie is getting that all erased, we'll go ahead and do this again. So you have 24 cans for $6.88? Yeah. And then the other place has 12 cans for three ninety-nine. Yeah. And what was the question again you need to do? Which is the better buy? And that's exactly what we would like to know all the time. What is the better value? All right. Susie's going to help you along. Okay. Now, it looks to me like from your notes that you wanted to get a unit rate. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So do you think you want to do cans per dollar? Or do you want to do dollars per can? Uh, can and dollars. Okay, but do you want to know how much each can is? Or do you want to know how many cans fit into a dollar? How much, how much dollars per can? Okay, then we're going to use this one here. Okay, dollars per can. So we're going to do 688 over 24. So 688 for 24 cans, and this is a ratio, but the fraction bar also means width. What, do you know? You know what the fraction bar means that we can do? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide? I lost it. Are you still there, Giselle? Yeah. Okay. Let me get that back for you, okay. there you go. So what should I do with 688 over 24? Divide. Oops, look at that. Yes, we'll do that. And okay. I'm going to help you out. Instead of you guys working it out, Susie, yeah. I'm going to let you know what that is. OK. So that's going to be 0.286 okay. repeating 6. All right. And so if you rounded to the nearest hundredth, because this is money, so we like to stop there, what would that be? 0 0.28 would look at 6, and 6 says go up or stay? Uh, go up. Right, so that's 0 0.29 cents per can. Okay, now let's do this one. 3.99 for 12 cans. Okay. Okay, I'm running out of room. It'll be 0 0.332. Okay. So on this one, when we round to the nearest hundredths, because we have to stop at the pennies, what would this round to? 
The two no cubes. Way. So 0 0.33 looks at 2, and 2 says stay or go up. 0 through 4 say stay, and 5 and up say go up. So this is like 33 cents per can. So there's this answer, and here's this answer. So at, this is Walmart, right? Walmart is 29 cents per can and Kroger is 33 cents per can. Now, when it says which is a better buy, do they want to know the higher price or the lower price? Lower price. Right. So which one do you think is it? Walmart. That's right. Okay, this is the better buy. Did that make sense for you? Yeah. Okay, thank you for calling. All right, nicely done right there. And for phoning in this afternoon, you as well have yourself a ticket to the Kern County Fair. So hopefully you have an opportunity to go out there and enjoy that. Ooh, different uh, animal on there that time. Haven't they been yeah. putting a cow out there usually? They get a pig out there that time? Anyway, you know what? A lot of students in schools are receiving stickers from the Kern County Superintendent of Schools Office. Have you received a sticker from Do the Math in your classroom yet? Um... I think. You think? Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, what I want you to do tomorrow is I want you to check, all right, and ask and look at your binder, look at your desk or something, and see if you received one of these stickers, all right? Does that look familiar to you at all? We're all right. getting bookmarks at our school. Right. So that's what I was going to say is there are stickers that are being sent out to different schools. There are bookmarks being sent out to different schools. If your school has not received them for whatever the reason may be, simply let us know call us, the phone numbers are at the bottom of the screen, let us know how many stickers, binder dividers, whatever you would like, and by all means, we'll send out more to you. Sound like a good deal? Yeah. As a matter of fact, we'll have Allie bring them out there and personally distribute them to everybody. Can you do that? <laughs> I would like Maybe. to Maybe. You're going to have to get out of school a little bit on that one, huh? <laughs> all right. Well, you know what? We're going to head out one more time. We're going to check out the, uh, let's see what the results are possibly, how they came about all of this. A special thanks to our friends from Science for Kern today with Mary Lou at Berkshire Elementary. We are back live at Berkshire Elementary School, and I'm with Michelle Roy, Science for Kern, and it has been amazing here today. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my <laughs> goodness. So <laughs> much fun. So well, much energy, yes. amazing collaboration, and just really great thinking going on yes. here this afternoon. And just hearing them talk and use the vocabulary, and it's just so amazing. When we they finish the challenge, and yes. I'm going to let you go around and talk with everybody and find out what happened with the challenge. Great. So are you ready? Let's start here with this group. They've got success and I'm going to let them explain what it is about the design of their, their boat that it will float with holding their 50 pennies. Go ahead. Tell us about your boat. Well, the deer had the idea for the longbow and, oh, uh, well, I had the idea for the longbow and he had the idea for the long edges so the water won't sink through the edges. Okay, and was this your first design, or had you tried something else first? It was like a, it was a, like our third one because we made a small one like that, one. But then we like said, oh, it's gonna be way too small, so it's gonna sink like a burrito because it was gonna be like wrapped around. <laughs> your first around. burrito boat sunk, right? <laughs> yeah. So then you retested and retested. Yeah, and and then we put like a, the long one because then we spread them out and then it won't be as heavy as it is. And also we wanted to go a little further so we only used like one strip, uh, like a little piece of tape and that was all. Okay, terrific. So how about if we move on to the next group and we have a boat here that we're ready to try out for the first time and we're wondering if it's going to float. So we'll let that group take their boat out of the water and we're going to see what happens when this design hits the water and hopefully we'll have successful floating. Go ahead. Let's see. Oh! So, so why do you think this boat didn't float and their boat did? What, what do you think the difference is? I think the difference is because <laughs> We didn't make it as long as them, and we didn't spread it out more. Okay, so let's move on to these ladies over here. Hello. 
they have a little bit a similar sign, but a little different than what we had going over here. All right, ladies, let's lift your boat in and see what happens. So, what do you, was this your first attempt? No. Can you tell us about one of your designs? Oh, we well, were? we were kind of like, was like, kind of like a sandwich, but then we made a little hole to lift it, like a little, like, um, um, flap, flap. And yeah. then we would put the pennies in it, but it didn't really work. It was sinking. Like, it would, like, it would, it like, like, stand like, for, like, it like would, like, stand for, seconds, like, 30, right? like, pennies. But then it would start sinking and sinking and sinking. And so it didn't work out. And so how many attempts did it take you to get this boat to float? Uh, our first attempt, and then this might have been I our second. Our, our second. No, third. Third. Yeah, because then we made a little one. Oh, yeah, our third. So do you think it makes a difference that you've got all the pennies spread out all across the yeah. bottom of the boat? Yeah, because... Leveled um, and, uh, like... Balance. Balance, yeah. Because it, w it was, like, tipping. Right? And, then, and then we, like, we had to spread them out, and we were very... Like specific, uh, with we like we didn't want these didn't to want stack these on each other because then it won't like <laughs> yeah. Well, like, that's amazing because ladies. if it was just on this one, it would go. Just like real engineers, yeah. you try, you had a plan, you tested it out, it didn't work, you modified, and then you tried it again. Way to go! All right, so let's move over here. Next group. All right, ladies. We've got a sailboat design here. Want to put that one in the water, and let's load, boys. Let's have we let's test yours at the same time. Put yours in the water as well, and on each side, we we can start loading in some pennies and see what happens with these two boats. Now earlier you were asking the students if it works better from dropping it way up here versus dropping it. Lower. What do you guys think? Lower. Lower. Why? Why wouldn't you want to drop it from a height, from a tall height? You wouldn't want to drop it from a tall height because it could dip and it can either make a hole or it can like push it down where the water can hit it. Kind of like rocking the boat, huh? Yeah. Well, this has been amazing. Did you guys have so much fun today doing this? Yeah! This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Now, every month, we will have yes. something. Next month, it has something to do with recycled. Next, next month's challenge will involve recycled materials and um, building a race car. So much fun. Now, if you're really interested in this really fun challenge that we did, it is we've uploaded the directions on our Facebook page. Also, check out our Facebook page for in-between scenes, all the great videos, the great pictures of all the kids working so hard. And we would love to thank everybody here at Berkshire Elementary. You guys were awesome today. And thank you, Michelle. This was a wonderful challenge today. so much fun. Thanks, kids, for working so hard. Yeah. And so we will see you next month. We'll be back next month. And we will see all you guys later. And back to you guys at the studio. All right. Thanks for that. Nice to see a lot of yes. successful boats out there. And it's always good to see one that didn't quite work out as well because that's how you can learn how to modify mm -hmm. and make things a little better. We'd like to thank Allie for coming in this afternoon. You had some fun this afternoon? Yes. Good. You know what? I'm glad you did. And you've got some parting gifts to go home with, but we're also going to send somebody else with a ticket to the Bakersfield Condors. So the students that phoned in today, all their names are in there. So reach in there, broke one of those out, and we'll see who it is. Kyle. There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> Kyle going to see the Condors. Until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education, in Kern County and throughout the state of California.